In the systems that are beside me here, we have the AMD Ryzen 24 and 2200Gs. These are the new AMD APUs, these are the CPU and graphics, all on the same chip, and they're actually a pretty decent value, but are they the next sort of console killing beast? Well, let's start off with taking a look at the specs. So, both of these uh, chips are four cores, although the uh, Ryzen 5 2400G is a four core, eight thread, versus the 2200G, which has just four cores and four threads. Both chips have four megabytes of L3 cache. They're both running a single CCX unit, as opposed to the split design from the previous generation Ryzen chips, and uh, both of them have fairly similar clock speeds. The 2200G actually has a slightly higher base clock of 3.6 gigahertz, but a very small boost clock just to 3.7, whereas the 2400G has a base of 3.5, but boosts all the way to 3.9, and actually saw this happening pretty well with the Precision Boost 2 as well, which is very nice to see. The Vega graphics units that are on both of them are relatively similar, although the uh, 2400G has 11 compute units, which means 712 stream pro uh, 704 stream processor, sorry, versus the 2200, which only has 8 compute units, otherwise uh, known as 512 stream processors. The price of these chips are actually pretty impressive and pretty competitive, so the 2400G, which is the Ryzen uh, 5 chip, that one is $169, or about £149 at the time of filming. The 2200G, the Ryzen 3, that one is about $99, or about £90 at the time of filming as well, which represents some excellent value for money, especially considering these are pretty decent CPUs and some pretty decent graphics all on one package, so very impressive. An important thing to note here is that all of the existing motherboards that work with uh, Ryzen chips will work with these as long as they've had a BIOS update. It's likely that uh, for even stuff like the ASUS B350 Prime, which is one of the cheaper boards on the market, but still provides pretty decent value for money, you're going to be able to use these new chips with those older boards, which is really nice to see, is that that's effectively backwards compatibility, but obviously it means that your cost for your overall system comes down by the fact that the, the motherboards are pretty cheap. You can even use, as both of these systems do, A320 if you don't fancy uh, overclocking them yourselves and get even more value for money, so it's uh, really nice to see. So now that you've heard the specs, you're probably wondering, what does your money get you? Well, let's take a look at the gaming performance. So starting off with Cinebench, as you can see we have some relatively decent scores, these aren't the highest in the world, you're looking at 816 and 154 for single and multi-threaded on the 24, and 543 and 104 for uh, single and multi on the 22. Certainly not bad, but not the highest in the world. Taking a look at Asus Realbench, these numbers aren't too bad, although stuff like the Open CL acceleration, uh, which is accelerated by the GPU here, uh, really kind of comes into effect compared to some of the other results that I have, so just bear that in mind, obviously so this is based on the integrated graphics. With 3 d Mark Firestrike at 1080p, again, you're looking at some pretty decent results. Uh, the physics scores are very impressive, although the overall is certainly a little on the low side, so just bear that in mind, uh, as it's not the most powerful chip on the planet, but obviously still decent. In GTA 5, at sets of low to medium settings, you're looking at 65 and 61 FPS average, which is awesome to see, and in terms of the minimums and maximums, don't pay too much attention to them, just because uh, these are the single lowest frames and not the sort of 97th percentile and stuff like that. Uh, Dirt Rally again is also pretty impressive, this is on medium settings at 1080p so you can actually turn this down even further if you want to, to get over 60 FPS, but either way, both of these chips are pretty close, which is really nice to see. Now, of course, do bear in mind that these aren't, you know, your, your uh, 1050, 1050 Ti kind of killing chips. They're, they're kind of APUs, they're built in, they're, they're something that can kind of get you by if you only have a couple hundred quid and you need to buy or you want a gaming system, but you can't quite stretch or you, you can't quite save up for a graphics card just yet, so... It's a, a nice sort of middle point where you get some pretty decent gaming performance, especially you know uh, 720p medium to high versus uh, and obviously 1080p sort of medium to low. So you're going to have a pretty decent time on this, and I think uh, for the, for the value for money proposition, I think you're you're going to be pretty happy. In terms of temperatures for the chips, the maximum I saw here on both of them was around about 77 degrees Celsius with the Wraith Stealth cooler, which is the one that comes in the box. So I think you'll be pretty happy with that too. Now of course these chips have plenty of other 
applications, especially the 2200G, which represents a pretty fantastic value for money. You have a lot of options and stuff like a, a cheap end uh, video editing rig for uh, you know offices, or even just general office machines. You have a decent amount of compute power available to you on the CPU side, and obviously with those integrated integrated graphics and uh, obviously stuff like OpenCL acceleration being available to you, this could be pretty interesting for even just basic workloads. And of course, you can obviously use this for say your family PC or even your HTPC if you want to occasionally play games on it, but generally speaking, you're just going to be serving media up. That could be a pretty decent option for you. So. Yeah, that's kind of a that's kind of the main bits. Now, while this is a review of the chips themselves, I just want to mention that the systems from Fierce PC here actually come with these cool side panels, our front panels, and you can pick which one you want. So feel free to take a look at that in the description down below. Now, I would mention that there's a pretty big caveat at the time of filming, and that is that these chips are pretty regularly unstable. I spent a lot of time trying to work out how to get these chips to to run properly, whether it's from the the CPU side or the GPU side, and I found that uh, even with the A320 motherboards, which obviously don't allow for overclocking properly. Um, setting the GPU frequency to be 1500 megahertz seemed to solve all of my problems on both of the chips. So just a, a wee hint if you're planning on picking them up. So with that said, before I jump into the scoring and my final thoughts on this, I'd love to hear yours in the comments down below. Are you planning on picking up these chips or are you just generally impressed with the, the availability or are you more uh, kind of disheartened by the overall performance? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. But otherwise, for me, these are fantastic value for money. If you're planning on picking Picking up a new gaming PC but you really can't spend too much, these are fantastic options and I highly recommend that you take a look at them if you can't go down the route of getting a full, proper discrete graphics card, especially due to the graphics card prices being so high at the moment. Are these the next budget console killing chips though? I'm not entirely sure, especially with stuff like the Xbox One X which is currently selling for around about £400 at the time of filming in the UK versus even the 2200G system which from Fierce PC, the, the one that we have here, is around about £500. £500, I feel like you're going to get a bit more of a you know specific gaming experience uh, and a better gaming experience out of that, especially because it can technically play 4K, uh, whereas obviously you're looking at, well you're still potentially getting better FPS in certain situations, 720p to 1080p with these sort of systems, uh, but obviously you do get the benefits of having a full PC so you can do whatever you like, so there's kind of trade-offs there. But otherwise, moving on to scoring, for me I'm going to lump these in together because while they are separate chips, I think they deserve the same scoring here, so I'll just keep it simple and leave it as one. So starting off with Vive Money, I think they have to be a 5 in terms of performance. I'm going to go with a 4.5 just because while the CPU seems to do a pretty good job at still being an amazing CPU, the Vega graphics could be a tiny bit faster if possible. Uh, in terms of the functionality, it's going to be a 4.5. In terms of styling, it's a CPU, so it's a 5. And in terms of uh, the Titan BB score, I think this has to be a 5 on a top tier award. Both of these these chips are fantastic, they're both excellingly good value for money and I highly recommend them. If you want to take a look at pricing for the chips or these systems, take a look at the links in the description down below. There'll be links to the systems for Fierce PC and Amazon links to the actual chips themselves, so feel free to take a look at those. If you have any questions about the system or why I'm suddenly more Scottish, feel free to ask me in the comments down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can and as I said I'd love to hear your thoughts on them as well in those comments down below too. There will be some other videos over here for you to check out. If you're new to the channel, feel free to hit that subscribe button for more videos every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. There's obviously Amazon, Overclockers UK, affiliate links down below and Patreon too if you want to support me there. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. Hope you uh, all enjoyed it. We'll see you all in the next video.